Hello, I'm Skylar DeVos with Inquiry by Design. We're going to continue our series about tips and tricks for the classroom, but today we're going to zoom out a little bit to more of a general practice. We're going to focus on independent reading practices. Now, as an ELA teacher, you've probably been hearing about that for years and years, about the importance of independent reading, but it's easy to push it outside of the classroom and think of it as something that's more of a nice to have than a need to have, or to think, I don't really have time for that, or even sometimes to think, I don't see how it fits in with my specific learning objectives. So what I want to do is show you today just how closely interconnected our students' independent reading practices are with those learning objectives. But first, take a moment to listen to the experience of one of our teachers in Tacoma. She's describing what happened in her classroom shortly after she implemented some independent reading strategies with her students. And he and the kids absolutely are, have bought in their, they're creating relationships with their characters, they're talking about their books, their writing has improved. It's just, it's totally different than what we were doing before. That's what was our excited. next question is, how is this different than what you were doing? And because they never got to, they never got to even learn about a character. They never got to develop a relationship with a character, and now they do. They didn't get, they didn't have to go through that icky period where you, you're not quite sure if you like the book or the, the characters, because they never had the stamina. They read a, they read an excerpt for a week. I wouldn't do that. I don't do that. You don't mm -hmm. do that. And they're reading, and they're and they're checking off their books on their lists, and they're doing book passes, and they're being honest, and they're enjoying it. They're enjoying it. And that matters not only because we want our students to love reading, but because while they are reading, they are soaking up language skills. We tend to think that lots of discrete skill-building exercises will suddenly lead to good readers. But it's more the other way around. It's lots of reading about things that we care about, stories that pull us in, that builds all of those skills. Look at vocabulary. We learn vocabulary ten times faster through reading that we do for pleasure than we do through direct instruction. In fact, free voluntary reading shows greater gains than direct instruction, not only on vocabulary, but on reading comprehension, writing skills, grammar skills. It's basically the only way that we get a larger sense of language style, and it even increases our spelling ability. I used to have a professor who said that we could be good readers without writing, but we could not be good writers without reading. And the numbers support this. If you take two students who are at the 50th percentile, they are perfectly average, and give one of them a sustained silent reading program. At the end of this period, the student who started out and did not get the program is still perfectly average. The student who went through it is now at the 81st percentile, and they got there by choosing what they wanted to read and by enjoying it, because the brain learns what it loves. And this isn't just a strategy for a school over there, maybe not your kids. This is a strategy for everybody at all ages. This is a researched intervention strategy for students from high poverty backgrounds. This is a strategy for students who are English language learners. This is a strategy for students with learning disabilities, and it naturally differentiates for your highest ability learners in your class. The tragedy of a lot of these classrooms is that students who need the most additional exposure to reading often get the least of it. When we push it outside of the classroom, what happens is that the students who came into our class already reading on their own continue to read on their own. And the students who came into our class not reading on their own continue to not read. So we're gonna circle back around to this topic in some later videos, but I hope that we've piqued your interest in it. If you found this useful, helpful, interesting, please like it, share it, tweet it, email it out to anybody, uh, and always visit us at inquirybydesign.com. Thank you.